It's the dictionary. 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 Well, hello, word nerds. Welcome to the dictionary. Welcome, everybody. Everybody is welcome here. Hey, how you doing? What's up? Uh, let's just get into the words. I am recording this, by the way, at uh, 1240 on March 31st. It is a Sunday. I am here to get some, well, get some dictionary work done. I got to post some episodes and I got to record one or two. Because here's the thing. I My schedule is to record before work, Monday through Friday, which is five episodes in a week. But I post five episodes a week. So there's no chance for me to get ahead But there is a chance for me to get behind easily on certain days when I can't record. And so I am not nearly as ahead on this podcast as I used to be or as I would like to be. So I kind of got to record some extra stuff on the weekend sometimes. So that's the goal. I'm going to maybe maybe I'll record two today. We'll see. All right. The first word in the this episode is the second form of. Of the prefix, yes, this is the prefix. Now, it's hard to see, I think, because there's a thing there. Yes, it's the prefix X, second form. I thought there was another thing in there, but it's not. This one says, see the prefix XO, E-X-O. So we can't talk about that one at all. And we just have to make a sound effect, which is... Okay, the next word is another prefix, exa, E-X-A. This means, ooh, quintillion. Hehe, <laughs> quintillion, as in the example, exajoule. So that's quin, a quintillion of jewels. Quintillion. What is quintillion? Well, it is 10 to the neg, no, 10 to the 18th. And I think, I believe, if I remember correctly, we uh, I talked about these not terribly long ago. So how many, is that 18 zeros? How many zeros are in a quintillion? A, yep, 18 zeros. So that, oh, yes, it shows us here. So that's thousands, millions, billions, trillions, something, something, something. So that would be, I don't know, it's more than a million million. Six groups of three zeros. One zero 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 quintillion. What what when does quintillion get used? How often are people using quintillion? What can we use to describe a quintillion? Definition with examples. That's what we well, that's not I mean, yes, examples, but like as they're an exabyte is equal to one quintillion bytes. An exameter is one quintillion meters. Okay, but like what in the real world is a quintillion? What is measured in quintillions? Stars probably. Yeah, I mean, there's there's got to be at least a quintillion stars out there. Twisting and turning the Rubik's Cube results in unlimited permutations. The number of combinations of a Rubik's Cube is about 43 quintillions. That's a lot of Rubik's Cubes. The whole universe is about 68 quintillion times the size of Earth. That actually seems smaller than I would have expected. The volume of Earth's ocean is approximately 1.35 quintillion cubic meters. These are all facts that you can tell your friends. There are about 1.7 quintillion water molecules in one drop of of water one drop of water there my water bottle is here how many drops there so this quint- so many there are about 10 quintillion insect species on the earth not 10 quintillion insects 10 quintillion insect species how many insects are on the planet earth The last one. Our planet Earth has about 326 quintillion gallons of water. So good to know. Thank you for that. Okay. Exa. The prefix exa is quintillion. That's the point. The next word is exacerbate. Exacerbate. This is a verb from 1660. 
This means to make more violent, bitter, or severe. And the example is the new law only exacerbates the problem. Why am I overemphasizing? Exacerbate. Exacerbates the problem. Exacerbation, that is a noun. It's not great when things are exacerbated. It's not great to exacerbate. Now this word sounds crazy weird. More violent, more bitter, or more severe. Why on this night do we eat only exacerbated bitter herbs? Okay, the etymology, because we got to know this. This is from the Latin verb exacerbare. That's almost the exact same word. That's from the X prefix plus acerbus or acerbus, which means harsh or harsh or bitter from acer, which means sharp. So sharp, and then they added the bus at the end of acer, and it became harsh and bitter somehow. Sharp to harsh and bitter. Maybe sharp cheese, and then you put it on a bus, and it becomes bitter cheese, harsh cheese. And then you put the X in front of it. Well, let's remind ourselves what the X prefix means. Uh, let's see. We've got uh, number one is out of or outside. Um, and then also not. And um, also former. I don't think we're using former in this context. So not, well, it wouldn't be not because then it would be not harsh or not bitter, but it's making it more. So it must be the first one, out of or outside. But it's not like you're taking your harshness and your bitterness outside. Unless, I guess, in some form, it's, you're like, you're making it bigger. You're expanding on the harshness, the bitterness, the severeness, the violentness. Uh, yeah, that's... A, oh, and there's more at the word edge. E-D-G-E. -E. Okay. The next word is the first form of the word exact. This is a transitive verb from 1564. Number one. To call for forcibly or urgently and obtain. Did I read this wrong? What? To call for, to call for, this is how you read it, to call for forcibly or urgently and obtain. So you are, you want something forceful and urgent. Quickly, right now, I need some force and then I get it. This is confusing to me. I'm guessing this is military. We've got an example. It's a quote. From them, from them has been exacted the ultimate sacrifice. And that is a quote from D.D. Eisenhower. Dwight D. Eisenhower. What, what was his Eisenhower? What was his middle name? Maybe it's Dwight Dwight. That would be fantastic. So the quote is, from them has been exacted the ultimate sacrifice. Well, I have to assume, I believe that means that people made the ultimate sacrifice. They died, probably talking about military people. And so they called for, I don't see, I, I'm, I don't know the connection to the definition though. They, what was called, they called for their death. Their death was called for. It was obtained. They, I, 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 I'm having a little trouble connecting those. Number two, to call for as necessary or desirable. And there is no... Uh, there's no example there to call for necessary or desirable. So I guess you want something, you desire it, and it is also necessary. You want it and you need it. You exact it. I don't feel like I've ever used exact as a verb. So this is a little bit odd to me. Um, a synonym is the word demand. Yep, that makes sense based on these definitions. I demand to see the manager right now. I exact the manager. Is that how you would use this in context? I exact to see the manager. Exactable is an adjective. Exactor with an O-R or an E-R. That's a noun. And I think any time that I see the E-R added to a word like this, I'm just going to, every time I'm just going to say it's a, it's a superhero, it's a villain, it's a something, because that's where my brain goes. And I think it's funny to have these silly names. The exactor is just demanding that you do things quickly right now. 
Okay, this word is a Middle English word, and it means to require as payment, which is from the Latin exactus, which is from the verb exigere, which means to drive out or demand or measure. And that, that is from the X prefix plus agere, which means to drive. And there is more at the word agent. So yeah, driving, demanding, all those things. Makes sense, I guess. Bulgak. Next is the second form of exact adjective from 1533. Number one, exhibiting or marked by strict, particular, and complete accordance with fact or a standard. We want our measurements to be exact. If you are doing some carpentry, you got to be real exact with what you're measuring. Otherwise, it's going to be all wonky donkey, and you don't want your carpentry to be wonky donkey. Um, exhibiting or marked by. So something that is exact shows uh, it's strict, it's particular, it's uh, in complete accordance with a fact or a standard. I think we need more standards in the world. We have a lot of standards, but we don't have enough. I think that there's some things, you know, there's like technology things that have various proprietary cables and ports and, oh, come on, can we just have some more standards? Number two, marked by thorough consideration or minute measurements, measurement of small factual details. Small factual details. So you're so exact in the story you're telling, the details that you are giving in your story, uh, you, are, you are taking lots of consideration uh, when you are telling your exact story. I like to be exact. I've probably said this before. Um, things can be interpreted in lots of different ways. Uh, at least two or three. You can come up with at least two or three interpretations of anything that anybody says or does. So... I think it's good to be exact, to be explicit with our words. I should I should talk more about this when we get to the word explicit in a handful of episodes. Yeah, I prefer explicit. I need things explicitly said to me. Let's be exact on our words. Um, the, another a synonym is the word correct. Correct. Exactness is a noun, and I, be, I believe it has the same etymology. So we're gonna go. The next word is exacta. Uh, it's just exact with an A at the end. Noun from 1964. The synonym is perfecta. Hmm. I don't know what either one of those is. Uh, I mean, I can, I can guess, but let's look at the etymology. This is uh, American Spanish. I don't know why it just doesn't say, say Spanish. Is this not in... Spanish Spanish? Did the Americans take it and said, we're just going to make up our own word? Um, it's from the American Spanish word exacta, but before that, in parentheses, it says uh, quiniela, quiniela, uh, and it means exact quiniela. And I don't know what quiniela is, but it's exact. Well, now I'm kind of curious about a quiniela. Quiniela? Um, is this how you spell it? Let's see. Q, U, oh, there's an I. I missed an I. Yep, that's it. Um, what is a quiniela? Um, it's a game of chance resembling a lottery. So, for some reason, um, exacta. You want to be exact with your quiniela? I don't know how that's used or why the word exact is in there. Okay. Blukutgak. Next is exact differential, two words, noun from 1825. A differential expression of the form, I'm going to skip that for now, where the x's are the partial derivatives of a function, and then it shows a function, with respect to another thing, respectively. Ugh, and now I have to describe this to you. Uh, so the form, a differential expression of the form, here we go, here's the form, uh, capital X with a subscript 1, and then we have lowercase d x, and then there's another subscript 1 after the little x, and then it says plus dot 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 plus 
I'll get back to that in a second. And then it's the same thing, x, dx, but instead of subscript ones, it's n, the letter n, which basically means you've got this, this little chunk, this x1, dx1, and depending on the context of this mathematical expression that you're doing, you might have x2, dx2. So, you know, there's, it's a second form of the big X and a second form of the little X. And then it could be the third and the fourth and the fifth. You just keep on going until you get to this last one, XN. And the N basically stands for whatever number is the last one in that series. And that's why there's the, the dot, 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 the ellipses. Um, it shows that it's just we're, we're taking out all the stuff because we don't know how many you're going to have up and it's just all the way through until the end you can fill it in with the actual numbers okay so that's the that's the form and the big x's are the partial derivatives of a function so the function is oh boy f f stands for function and then in parentheses it says little x with a subscript one dot 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 x little n so, so same thing, I guess, that you have the same idea. You have maybe a whole bunch of these x's, and I don't know how this is used in the function, but you're going to have a certain number of them, which is probably going to match the certain number of the big x's in the main form. Uh, with respect to x little 1, dot, 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 x little n, respectively. Okay, I don't really understand anything past what I said. So I am sorry about that. I can't give you more. But this is not a math class. This is not even a dictionary or a word class. It's just a podcast or a YouTube show. So I can't get in trouble for not telling you everything. Uh, anyway, if you like math, go learn about exact differential. Blick it cow. Next is exacting with an I-N-G. Adjective from 1634. Number one, trine to unremittently severe in making demands. Oh, trying, uh, I think I read that wrong. I'm sure I did. Tryingly or unremittingly severe in making demands. So you are making demands. Um, you, are, you are very severe in your demands. You are so severe that you are tryingly severe or unremittingly severe. This is like maybe the most possible severe you can be. I like to take things down to a very young level of mental capacity because that's where I am. Uh, okay, that's number one. Number two is requiring careful attention and precision. I my My mouth doesn't like to always work properly, so I have to be exacting when I talk sometimes. I need to... Um, my, it, it, sometimes when I talk, it requires careful attention and precision with where I am putting my lips and my mouth. Okay. Uh, synonym is the word onerous. Onerous is also exacting. Okay. Exactingly is an adverb and exactingness is a noun. Exaction. Yeah, exaction. Noun from the 15th century. Number 1A, the act or process of exacting. I gotta go do some exaction when I'm talking clearly. Number two, uh, 1B, the synonym is extortion. Hmm, exaction, extortion. You probably need to be pretty exact when you are extorting people taken their money and their property or whatever it is number two something exacted so while you are exacting you are exact you're doing exaction on something that is ex it's also the exaction it's been exacted but especially a fee reward or contribution demanded or levied with severity or injustice a fee, reward, or contribution demanded or so I guess if you if you did something, you're like, I need a fee. I did a thing, so you gotta pay me. You gotta give me something for this thing that I did. I'm gonna demand it. That's my exaction. 
I'm going to extort you. This is this is the extortion. I'm I'm extorting this stuff from you because I deserve it. I require it. I need this. I think I think yes, severity or injustice. So like I need it so bad, I'm going to be pretty severe. I'm going to be exacting with how I get this exaction from you. Um, and maybe even some injustice. Maybe I will even, I'm willing to go hurt you to get this fee or reward. I don't like that. We got to move on. Exactitude. Noun from 1734. You've got an exactitude attitude. You're so exact with your attitude. This is the quality of or an instance of being exact, and the synonym is exactness. Exactitude. Yeah, I, I'm, you know, I'm not as much of a perfectionist as I used to be. Yeah, when I was younger, I definitely, uh, I definitely had some exactitude. Blukutkau! Exactly. Adverb from 1612, number 1a. In a manner or measure or to agree to a degree or number that strictly conforms to a fact or condition, as in, it's exactly 3 o'clock. It's exactly 1.02. Um, in a manner or... This is such a long definition. In a manner or measure, or to a degree or number that strictly conforms to a fact or condition... I don't know how they come up with these, but they, they're smart people who do this. It's, I, I would not, if I didn't know what exactly meant, this definition wouldn't help me. But it's correct, I guess. There's an, another example. These two pieces are exactly the same size. Maybe not to the atom, but they're close enough for our purposes that we want them exactly, we want them two feet, three inches, and one millimeter. And I understand that that's not how measurements work. You don't combine imperial and metric, but sometimes you just have to, because you want to be exact. Number 1B, in every respect, and the synonyms are altogether and entirely, as in, that was exactly the wrong thing to do. That was altogether entirely the wrong thing to do. Oh, how many times have think people said that to me, probably. Oh, Spencer, that was exactly not the thing that you should have said or done. In every respect, in every possible way, that was wrong. There's another example. Not exactly what I had in mind. No, I was thinking of something else. So in every respect, that's not what I wanted. Number two, it means quite so, and this is used to express agreement. Oh yes, I agree with you. You are exactly right. Quite so, quite rather, you are correct. I concur. Exact science, two words, noun from 1843. A science as physics, chemistry, or astronomy whose laws are capable of accurate quantitative expression. So their laws are capable of accurate quantitative expression. So in those sciences, uh, physics, chemistry, astronomy, probably some other ones, you, you, they, they require so much math um, that you can be very, very specific and exact with the numbers and the formulas and the whatever you got, whatever you're doing with those sciences, they are exact sciences because you can get very exact. But there's other ones like, I don't know, would biology not be an exact science? Something that doesn't deal with numbers maybe quite as much. Geology, maybe? You know, you hear people say, oh, it's not an exact science. What's not an exact science? Lots of things. Um, I can't think. There's something like, I mean, you could say like, you know, music. It's not a science at all, but it's not an exact science. Uh, sometimes you're just like, eh, you know, it's, it's kind of not perfect. It's close enough. It's not an exact science. Like, 
physics, astronomy. Was it chemistry? Was that the other one? Where did they go? Yes, there's chemistry. Okay, not an exact science. Some of them are. I didn't know that those were called exact sciences, but it makes sense. Exaggerate. Verb from 1613. I am exaggerating the numbers. Or the way I said the numbers. Starting with transitive, number one, to enlarge beyond bounds or the truth. Uh, the synonym is overstate, as in a friend exaggerates a man's virtues. And that is a quote from Joseph Addison. Joseph Addison was probably just writing a story about somebody, a friend of his maybe, who exaggerates his own virtues. I assume he was talking about himself. A friend exaggerates a man's virtues, his own virtues possibly. Uh, yeah. <laughs> he is exaggerating just how talented he is, whatever. Um, so overstate, yes, let, let's keep on going. I have some thoughts about exaggeration. Oh, that's another word. Wait, no, that's, that's one of the forms. Number two for exaggerate, to enlarge or increase, especially beyond the normal. The synonym is overemphasize. Intransitive is to make an overstatement. I have exaggerated. I've exaggerated uh, my skills at doing this podcast. I have overstated. I have overstayed my welcome, maybe. Exaggeratedly is an adverb. Exaggeratedness is a noun. Exaggeration is a noun. Exaggerative. Exaggerative. Uh, that is an adjective. Um, exaggerator. That is a noun. Oh, that, that villain is always exaggerating things. He's like, I'm so great, but he's really not. Um, exaggeratory. Exaggeratory. That's an adjective. Never heard of that one. Uh, okay, the etymology is, this is from the Latin verb exaggerare, which literally means to heap up, put things in a pile, heap them up, you are doing some exaggerare. Uh, that is from X plus agger, A-G-G-E-R, which means heap, plus, a, uh, no, from agerere, which means to carry toward... That is from the ad prefix plus gerere, which means to carry. So you're carrying things. You go pick up a whole bunch of stuff, bloom, 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 and then you put them in a pile. And you've, you've exaggerated the pile. You're digging a hole of sand at the beach. You dig it out, and you carry it, and you put it in a pile. You are making an exaggerated pile of sand. Okay. Um, yes, exaggerate. I, so again, this is like, this is back to how I like things to be explicit and clear. Uh, personally, because I am a little bit on the autism spectrum, um, I also don't really like exaggeration. Um, if like somebody's telling a story and they exaggerate and I know the story, I'm like, no, you, you did it. You got to You got to be correct in what you're saying. You got you can't exaggerate. You got to be exact with your words and your things. And they're like, yeah, but it's like it's for good, good story uh, telling. It makes it more interesting. I'm like, oh, fine, whatever. Exaggerate. I don't care. People are not going to believe you. I think that's the thing is that if you exaggerate because I am pretty literal much less than I used to be, but I'm a pretty literal person. And there are some people who are way more literal than I am. You know, if somebody's like, I, I made a hundred sandwiches. Did you really make a hundred sandwiches or are you exaggerating? And I would probably believe them if they told me that originally. Exaggerate. Yeah. I just have mixed feelings about it. I get it. Sometimes it's fun to exaggerate, but if you if you want people to believe you and just be just be honest. All right. The next word, it's I think the last word. It's exalt. E X A L T. Verb from uh, the 15th century starting with transitive number 1. 
to raise in rank, power, or character. Exalt your giving them a better rank. Number two, to elevate by praise or in estimation. The synonym is glorify. Yeah, you're you are you are raising their ego, exaggerating their ego, uh, making them validating how great they are. Might not be true, but it, it's true in your mind, maybe. Number three is obsolete. The synonym is elate. Number four, to raise high, and the synonym is elevate. I'm going to, because my nose gets very runny, I'm going to, I'm going to exalt this box of nose tissues. I'm elevating it up out of the screen so you can't see it anymore, but you can see my arm hair, my armpit hair. Uh, that's elevate. Number five is to enhance the activity of the synonym is intensify, as in rousing and exalting the imagination. That is a quote from George Eliot. Rousing and exalting the imagination. So we are intensifying the imagination, enhancing the activity of imagination. Here's intransitive, which is just to induce exaltation. Exaltedly is an adverb, and exalter is a noun. The one who is doing all of the elevating, the raising. It's just a that's a weird it's a weird villain, just just raising things up. Hey, I'm just gonna pick you up, and that's it. This word is from the Latin verb exaltare, which is from the ex prefix plus altus, which means high. And there's more at the word old for some reason. I don't know why. It's word of the episode time. Everybody's favorite time. Today we had ex. Exa, exacerbate, exact, exact, exacta, exact, differential, exacting, exaction, exactitude, exactly, exact science, exaggerate, and exalt. Ooh, well, I mean, exaggerate and exactly are kind of the opposites, which is interesting. Do you want to be exactly correct or do you want to exaggerate? I prefer exactly. That's how I like to live my life. I like to live my life exactly. Exactly the right way and not exaggerating. All right, fine. Um, I'm going to now tell you about a movie that I watched. Because I can. Because I must. Um, what's next? Godzilla x Kong. The New Empire. Now, I have seen a handful of Godzilla and Kong movies, but I have not seen most of them, and I have not seen uh, most of the recent ones, which I guess this is, you know, it's a sequel. I probably should have seen the, I mean, I guess it's a sequel. I should have seen at least one or two of the previous ones from the Godzilla world and the King Kong world. Did they come together in another movie? I don't even know. They must have. I'm not sure about when and where that was, but I did feel like I was missing something, kind of. So I think I got to go back and I got to watch some some of the recent ones. But I also want to go back. I want Godzilla has been making movies constantly for all these decades. I want to go back and I want to watch them all. Um, but this movie specifically, um, it's bonkers, ridiculous, and I loved it. It's so silly. I mean, the monster movies in general are just silly. Um, but like, they just go for it. And the the characters, especially Kong... Um, you know, they, they bring some humanity to the character. He's just, he's not just like a, uh, an ape, a gorilla just doing stuff. There's he, they bring a lot of emotion to him too, which I really liked. So yeah, uh, uh, it's fun, you know, go watch it, especially on the big screen if you can, although it's probably going to be gone by the time this episode airs. Sorry about that. Um, anyway, that's it. That's the end of the episode. Thank you so much for watching my show, listening to my show, YouTube, all the podcast places. Go join the Patreon. One dollar a month. That's it. And subscribe to my YouTube channel, please. And thank you. This is the end. Thank you very much. This has been Spencer dispensing, exactly dispensing information. Goodbye. Goodbye.